What we're going to do today is we're going to start the main build of the chassis of the P1X and what I'll do along the way is I'm going to present this as a build guide so you can see what I'm doing and hopefully it might help some of you in the future if you choose to embark on the same path. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start, uh, let's start building this thing up. To embark on this, you're going to want to make sure you have a decent set of tools. Here we've got a good Allen key set, wrench, tape measure, spanner, wooden mallet, and a screwdriver. Here we have our trusty T-nut, which is going to become our best friend throughout the next coming weeks. So I thought the best way to present this was to use the instruction manual side by side and then show you exactly what I did and we can share in the pain throughout. Now, first of all, you're going to take your 1350mm 4 slot aluminium profile and slot in the 4 M8 T-nuts. You're then going to do the same thing for the 500mm 4 slot aluminium profile and put in 4 T-nuts. You're going to want to do this for all 4 lengths of the aluminium profile to build up the 4 sides and you want to make sure the T-nuts have the holes pointed inwards because I felt this was best for the corner brackets as seen here in page 5. Now here you're going to take 8 corner brackets and fit them both superiorly and inferiorly at all 4 corners of this box you're going to create. Now important to note at the bottom right of this image you can see there is 500 millimeters of gap between the front short piece and the back short piece. You're going to want to take a tape measure and measure that out accurately. So as I was putting this together alone I just thought that the best way to put this together was just to stack them up on end and as you can see they sit quite nicely. Now you're going to want to take your tape measure here and again we're going to measure out 500 millimeters as specified on the instruction sheet. Oh, yeah, I'm just having a cheeky little check and um, as you can see OCD is very much playing a big part here but it's important to get it right. Here we're going to take four corner brackets and mount it superiorly and inferiorly. These are M8 16mm bolts, make sure you've got the right ones and then just softly fit them into the M8 T-nuts because you're going to want an element of adjustability to get this bang on there. And then what you're going to do is, when you level this, so when you tighten this, you want this nice and flush here, right? So you want a nice kind of neat, neat profile lining up there. There you go, let's get that in focus. And over here as well, making sure that is nice and in focus as you can see as we're just going over the top spend a bit of time doing that short in the video but you get the idea and from this point here to here so we're going to take the tape measure a little bit of studio magic and then hook it over the edge and from there we are going to bake Get into focus and we're aiming for 50 centimeters and what you want to do is measure that a couple of points to make sure it's a perfect square and as if by magic we are nicely bracketed and covered up so we're going to call it a day for today and uh, tomorrow we will continue with the build um, bye for now right welcome day two and this is the next step we're going to be adding the support plates and the adjustable the adjustable feet to the uh, to the old rig. Now, traditionally you would put four of these on, um, but what I'm gonna do is, because I wanna move the rig in and out, we're gonna put some heavy duty casters on, which you can hopefully see right there. So I got these from a nice Netherlands company and I'll link them in the bottom, not affiliated, but they are pretty good. Nice and premium. I think these are loaded up to 300 kilograms per wheel, so I'll be able to put Two on the, um, I'm going to put two on the front next to the pedal deck and I'm going to put two of these on the back so I'll just be able to lift it and drag the rig out as and when I choose to because I'll need to be doing some reviews and stuff along the way. So uh, let's get into the next bit. Now as long as you have Simlabs for feet, you will be able to fit these casters. Now I did source these from a lovely shop called Logi Hub. Now these are rated to 300 kilograms per wheel, which is important because you don't want to put flimsy wheels on your fancy new P1X with all your heavy kit on it because they will break. The thread length of these is 30 millimeter, which is just enough to get the nut on through the mounting plate, as you will see a little bit later. I'm not affiliated, but if you want these, I'll leave a link to them in the description below. Right, so what I've taken, first of all, is I've taken each feet and sort of I've leveled them to what I think is kind of the approximate height of the casters, if you can see that. Whoop, there. Right, so what I've done is I've taken the feet and the casters and of course sort of leveled this nut here because that's what the plate is going to sit on to the approximate height of the casters and then we can fine tune them after. Then we're going to need to do two over here as you can see of the feet and then we're going to do two casters over here and then we'll speed the little process and we can talk through it at the same time. Now we've got, it's basically going to be pop on, you're going to have nut, washer, 
plate, washer, nut, and that's basically the order. So here I'll just demonstrate one of the feet. There you want to put your washer on, then you want to put the mounting plate, one more washer, and then you want to gently put the nut on. We'll tighten this at the end. You want to do the same for the other side. I won't show you that, but what I will show you is how to attach the wheel next. Again, I will reiterate these casters have got M16 bolts with 30 millimeter threads on. They just slot through the mounting plate and there's just enough room to get the pre-included bolt that comes with the Simlab mounting plates. I've got these on my Simlab P1X at the moment. They're working very well. Again, this is with the beauty of hindsight in the future. Here we've got the two spanners. Now you're going to want two of these in order to tighten everything up. You're going to want to do these for the two feet at the back of the rig and you're going to want to do these for either your two feet at the front or the two casters. And you want to make sure these are nice and tight because the whole rig rests on these things. So you've got to make sure it's done nice and properly. Welcome to page eight of this ordeal. Here we're going to be mounting the plates which the feet and the casters sit on and we're going to be putting them into the aluminium profile. You'll notice we've got M8 slotted T-nuts which we're going to need to put in twofold both at front and back and please note the measurement from the front which is 300 millimeters so we're going to need to measure that out to make sure the weight is evenly distributed. Again we've got M8 bolts these are 25 millimeters in length and that is that for this bit. Now you'll notice there are end caps here now I would save putting the end caps on until the end just in case you want to slide any T-nuts up and out because once you put these in you cannot get them off without snapping them. I learned this the hard way. So here we take the M8 slotted T-nuts. Now what I do like about the SimLab stuff is they've got a little spring ball on the back which means they're really easy to kind of slot in so you don't have to feed them from the end. Um, now what you want to going to do is then take your plate with your M8 25mm bolt and line this up nice and neatly with the back. And you want to get both sides equal because we want a nice clean and neat looking rig. Here we are slotting our M8 T-nuts once again into the aluminium profile and we'll get these to approximately 300 millimeter. Don't want to waste any time. Then we take the plate and it's important that the 300 mil is measured to the first bolt. So you want to get those two M8 25 millimeter bolts nicely threaded in, leave them a little bit loose and then get your tape measure out and do the fine adjustment. And remember, measurement is taken to the first bolt. Tighten it up with your sexy Allen key. I'll leave a link to the review for those Allen keys just up above if you wish to check it out. And we are good to go. Here we are just abusing the panning function of my tripod to demonstrate the beautifully mounted two back feet and the beautifully mounted two casters on the front of the rig. Very, very happy with how these turned out. They look pretty cool. Here we are just giving a little bit of a test. Like you can see, lifting up from the back and these slide really nicely even on the thick rubbish carpet in my room which is still yet to be decorated. But all in all, very, very happy. Now what you'll notice is we have moved location. Now what you want to be real careful of is that you can get this rig out of the room you're building it in and into the room you actually want to build it in because it's actually quite big and won't fit through a door. Here we are on page 9 of our simulator experience and here we are building the rails on which our seat slider is going to sit on. Now these are twofold 500mm, 40mm aluminium profiles and you're going to want to take two corner brackets with M8 60mm bolts with some M8 nuts and slot them in. Here we'll have a look at page 10, and this is just showing where it's going to be positioned. You'll notice that the small square section on the back is where the seat is going to be mounted, and you want to get this nice and flush at the back, but I'll demonstrate this nice and neatly in the next section. Important to note for the corner brackets here, they're not going to align on one side neatly with the aluminum profiles. You want to kind of take a flat screwdriver and snap those off. Here, as you can see, we're getting the corner brackets in, and we're getting them prepared for mounting on the side. Now you're going to want to loosely attach these first because you're going to want to be able to adjust these based on the width of your seat and you're only going to know that once you've mounted your uh, mounting brackets to the seat and aligned it on top. So don't get over keen and tighten everything off the back. Here we've got just another angle. We're slotting in the T-nuts, getting all the angle brackets ready for mounting, slotting the T-nuts in in preparation as well. So here we go. Corner brackets nicely mounted. And then we'll just speed this up slightly whilst we align and adjust the secondary support here. You'll notice that these are aligned flush to the back end of the rig to get things nice and neat. 
What we've gone with here is the Track Racer bucket seat mounting solution. Now, the reason I've gone with this one instead of the Simlab one is, as you can see on the front aspect, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different mounting options, which gives a little bit more adjustability to the angle you can create, which is ultimately ended up really, really essential to where I wanted to mount my base shakers, which we will cover in a later video if you'd like to check that out. You'll also notice here we've got the sexy Simlab washers, and these are fitted with M8 bolts as well. Do this on both sides, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this seat into the other room, and we're going to mount it on top to gauge the width of those struts. As you can see, very happy. Here we are with strength and might, bringing the bucket seat into the old rig room, and we're going to gently position the seat on top of those struts, which are, as I would like to recall, nice and loosely mounted so we were able to slide and adjust them to the correct position because as you can see on the track racer there are multiple holes in order to which to mount this to so here i am just adjusting things slightly rejigging them again a little bit just to make sure they're absolutely perfect and this is again going to decide your seating position and as you can tell it is a little bit of a tedious procedure we've got the tape measure out measuring on each side we're making sure things are nice and equal this took a really really long time because ultimately your seating position is very very important because it's how you enjoy the whole rig so please take time and make sure you get this absolutely correct and then when you're absolutely happy things are bang on tighten it up Now the seat slider really is its own beast and if I'm honest was a complete pain in the backside to set up. Now what you're going to want to do is position the sliders, I would suggest roughly equidistant on these mounts. Um, there, I, I ended up rem adjusting these a little bit based on my seating position but you're ultimately going to have enough front and back to get to where you want as well. Important to note here is you're going to want these in the correct orientation to have the handle, right? So you want the handle beneath your seat, not pointing towards the back. If you get this mount and it's the wrong way around, you're going to be really, really annoyed. So double check that. As you can see, look at the picture that, uh, that you can see in front of you and it should be quite clear. You want the big long wire directed towards the front of the seat and that's the direction you want these seat sliders to go with the two holes at the front and the single hole right at the back. Now this next bit is another pain in the backside. So you're going to take the handle and you're going to gently pry it open. And this is ultimately going to leave it larger on one side than the other. Now I've skipped an awful lot of footage here because it took me a long time. Now you can whack the end of this in the end of the aluminium profile, which is important to leave those spaces off. And then once the handle is in the end of the aluminium profile, you can lever it to make sure that you get the end of the handle parallel with the seat slider. They've got to be parallel, otherwise it won't lock in and it won't lift properly take time doing this because ultimately if you don't it will trash your entire seat slider and you'll be very very annoyed you'll have to take the whole thing off in order to get it right once you've done that you then want to take your seat and you want to gently put it on to the seat slider and you want to kind of adjust it so it's smack center and you'll get your allen key in there and you want to tighten it with a spanner beneath as well now this is quite fiddly and what you're going to have to do is move the seat slider forwards and backwards in order to get to both the front and the back end take time with this but once it's done as you can see here we've got well you can see just there how tricky it is to get the spanner in it's important to have a good allen key set as well because it just made life a lot easier i can't stress that enough i was very happy i bought the set that i did we'll just come around the front and then we'll have a little look at the mounting points here again again you'll see that you'll have to lift the slider up and bring the slider forward in order to tackle that bolt at the front and also that bolt at the front as well Ultimately, um, very, very happy with how the seat looks. I was thrilled with this. Um, I'll do a review on the Sparco QRT Evo XL, which is what I've got, and um, how to mount some base shakers, like I said before in a later video. But ultimately, this is the end of this seat ordeal. Welcome to page 11 of the Similar P1X build. Here we're going to start preparing to mount the wheelbase. Now we're mounting a DD2, so this will differ slightly for your wheelbase if it is different. Here we've got the 780mm three-slotted profile where we're going to get some M8 um, T-nuts and we're going to take the sandwich plate large size and put in M8 countersunk 20mm bolts to secure this. Um, again, I probably would put the end caps on this time, but if you want to leave them on to the end, I don't think it's a massive problem. Just please bear in mind if they, you do put them on, they're very difficult to get off. 
Now if we look at page 12, this is just showing the position of where you want the wheelbase struts to be mounted on your P1X. Now, I would say this is a starting point. Now the, the diagram here says 540 millimeters. Now because I've got quite long arms, I'm six foot, I ended up shifting this a little bit back. Now what I would do is while you're on your seat, sit on it and then leave these loose and then what you can do is adjust these mounting struts to exactly where you want them. 540 is a good guide but then adjust to your specification and arm size. So again this bit is pretty simple just take your M8 T-nuts and slot them into the profile. I like to have the holes pointing outwards because that just makes me feel better. Um, do them both on the same sides and then you're simply going to take your sandwich plate, place it on top, you're going to take your countersunk M8 bolts and simply tighten it up. Easy peasy. Same as always, what we've done here is we've taken our T-nuts with the holes pointing outwards, again, because it makes me feel better, and we're going to gently slot this in using more countersunk M8 bolts. Adjust it to the correct length. Now, I didn't include the bit where I ended up adjusting this, so I ended up pushing it a little bit closer to the front end of the rig, because that was better for me, because the wheelbase was too close towards me, but ultimately this will differ from person to person. Now I'd stress again with this whole thing it's very important to be accurate because these two monolithic structures are going to be supporting your wheelbase which is going to be carrying all of the torque from that really strong wheelbase if you have one um, and supporting it. So take your time, make sure it's all tightened up, make sure it's all nice and sturdy and you're good to go. Welcome to page 17. Now this is going to be different depending on your wheelbase and also the wheelbase mount that you purchased. You're going to have to buy a wheelbase mount suitable for your wheelbase. Um, common sense should dictate that. However, here we have the DD2 side mount, which I was pretty excited to get on because I think it looks really, really cool. You're going to have two side supports, which again mounted with some countersunk bolts, which will be included in the pack. You're then going to have two inner supports, which are then going to be attached to the profile with, again, two countersunk M8 bolts as well. Um, get this all mounted up, and I'll show you how to do it in the next section. Now, what I will say about this section is this is so much easier if you have a second pair of hands. Now... I didn't have a second pair of hands, so I kind of had to soldier through this alone, and it is doable, but it definitely wasn't a pleasurable experience. I arguably had what some would define as a bad time. Here you can see we've just um, attached both of the side supports with the inner supports as well, and it sort of looks like a little bit like a TIE fighter. You know, Star Wars. Anyway, um, so the DD2 is going to go smack bang in the middle of these. And here we've used the Simlab washers because this bit is on view and I just think it looks pretty cool and I am pretty happy with them. They are expensive but ultimately I'm happy I have them. Um, I do think they look quite cool. So here we go, it sort of looks like a little plane taken off. Now here is page 18 which shows the diagram of how this gets mounted onto your side supports. Important to note here with the M8 20mm bolts you're going to be using to secure this to the side supports, use washers and make sure that these are properly tightened. You're also going to have to feed in three M8 T-nuts on each side in order to get this properly mounted. Now, here is me struggling, and this is cut down significantly for a very long, I think it lasts probably about 20 to 30 minutes of me basically trying to balance the DD2 with the existing T-nuts in situ, trying to thread the bolts in on my own without any kind of support. So ultimately, I think you need a second pair of hands for this. I also think it might have been easier to mount the supports first and then also then put the DD2 on separately. And if you watch really closely, you can see the moment caught on camera where I become a broken man in three, two, one. Oh, come on! <laughs> uh, no! Captain's log, it is day. I forget what day it is, but we've been working on this project for quite some time now. And in the last episode, we have installed a seat which we can now firmly sit in, which is nicely mounted to the P1X, and we've got a DD2, nicely mounted with the sexy Simlab washers. Today, we're doing pedals. Find out which pedals, coming up soon. Stay tuned. Welcome to page 19. Here we have two bits of aluminum profile, one two slot, one four slot, both length 470 millimeters. You're then gonna take two P1X pedal plates, both left and right, and secure them in place with 25 millimeter M8 countersunk bolts for each side. Once we've constructed this portion of the pedal plate, we're going to be going slightly off piste and moving to the SimLab pedal slider instruction manual because we've chosen to use that for this rig because I wanted a little bit more adjustability with my pedal position. 
So, public service announcement, this is now part of the pedal slider instruction manual, okay, we've moved. Now, this gives strict guidance as to how far apart you need to put things to get things lined up, so it's important to follow this. Between the front and the back bit of aluminium profile is 326 millimeter, and the distance between the holes of the M8 T-nuts is 361 millimeters, so you've got to follow that. Now this next bit I've adapted slightly, so as the seat sliders are orientated here, the handle will be at the furthest point away on the rig. If you want the handle towards you, so you can reach it when you're sat down on your seat, you're gonna to wanna to turn this the other way around, so you want to invert and reverse what this image is showing you. If you're happy, whichever way you want to do it, just take the M8 12 millimeter bolts and connect them to the T-nuts, exactly as we did for the seat slider. On the next page, this is just demonstrating that you need to move the sliders in order to access the bolt securing hole on the other end of the slider. And also, please note, it needs to be 50 millimeters from the edge of the pedal plate as well. This is so it lines up with the SimLab P1X pedal plate that you're gonna mount your pedals to. This next page of the tutorial is just demonstrating the application of the M8 spacers, which is gonna what's gonna give you the distance between the slider and the base plate, which you're gonna mount your pedals to. Make sure these lock nuts are nylon threaded. If memory serves me correctly, all of the nuts included in the SimLab P1X build are indeed nylon threaded, and these are important because it stops them moving with any vibration from any motion or base shaker system. This is just showing that you need to move the slider in order to apply the spacer to the other end of the slider, and again, we're gonna to need to get that handle, bend it out, and also make the ends of the handle parallel by bending them in the aluminum profile to make sure that pressure is equally applied on both sides of the seat slider to make sure it slides nice and evenly. Here we are just mounting the seat sliders onto the pedal plate and we're measuring 50 millimeters from the edge with a tape measure to make sure that it is the exact position for the pedal base plate for when we need to attach it. Almost there, hang in. So now we've got the pedal base plate which we're going to attach to the spacers with the M8 20 millimeter bolt. Now this might take a little bit of jiggery pokery because if you haven't got it exactly bang on, you're gonna to need to be able to adjust the sliders a little bit. But if your measurements have been exact, you should be okay. Now on page 11 we're going to mount the heel rest. Now important to note there are two different plastic sleeves which give you a different height for the heel rest. Now in the instruction manual it documents that you should have four M6 45mm bolts. However, I think there's been a discrepancy with the upgrade to the new heel plate because I only had 40mm M6 included. I did contact SimLab, they said they hadn't heard of this before, but this may be different depending on what is in your pack. I ended up having a source, I, I went with 50mm black countersunk M6 bolts, um, but you probably could get away with 45mm, but double check your pack because when you get to this you don't want to be frustrated. So here we won't labor this too much. We're just adjusting the handle of the seat slider. Again, notice that the handle is gonna be directed towards the driver of the rig. And I personally, for me, I think this is a better option because I wanna be able to adjust it. Then we're gonna be balancing the pedal plate on top. I believe that there's a discrepancy with the bolts to get through this and then through the heel plate because the pedal plate is thicker than it used to be, I believe. I think they changed it recently. Ultimately, this is a cracking bit of kit. It's thick, it's heavy, it's gonna mount the pedals solid. Really happy with this. And once it's all tightened up, get the bolts in, get it nice and tight. It's a good solid bit of kit. Here we have the two plastic spacers and these are important because they're gonna dictate the height of your heel rest. Also, double check the size of the bolts because they should be 45 millimeter. I only had 40 millimeters, so I had to go out and buy some. I went with 50 millimeter in the end. So what I've done here, again, because I'm doing this alone, um, you wanna line up the spacers on top of the pedal deck and then thread the M6 bolts through the heel rest and then try, them, try and guide them through. Ultimately, it does work. It's very important to get the right ones on at this point because once this is mounted to the rig, because I had to change them at a later date, it becomes very, very difficult. So get it right first time, as uh, Tim Briggs would say, look it up, orthopedics, and um, you'll be happy as Larry. We have now transitioned back to the P1X manual, page 20, where we will be mounting the entire completed pedal base plate complex onto the distal end of the rig. So here we've got, again, M8 T-nuts, we're gonna slot four in. Look at the position of where they are. You can adjust the height if you want to, but I went for what's in the manual. Top row and second row, and then securing these with M8 25 millimeter bolts with M8 washers. And with this, it's pretty cool because you can adjust the angle of the pedal plate as well. So you don't have to leave that to your pedals. The rig will just do it for you. It's awesome. 
Again, I would stress for this bit, this is so much easier with the second pair of hands, but we persevered. So the single man approach is to get your legs beneath the whole thing to prop it up, and then you'll be able to kind of use your knee to guide into the holes and the M8 T-nuts on either side. Ultimately, it's doable, it's just not very comfortable. Um, you can adjust the angle, as you can see. I put quite a severe angle on this, so I ended up dropping it significantly once I actually drove the thing, so I wouldn't advise doing a 45 degree angle. And uh, here is the uh, pièce de résistance, the, uh, the finished product. Ultimately, the reason why I love the P1X is because it just looks so damn cool. This is a quality rig. I did a lot of research before I got this, and this is just a little flyby to show that just how, how well built it is. All the plates are really, really thick. Everything's really solid. The hardware they give you is pretty top notch. I really quite like the DD2 mount as well. And the sparker bucket seat as well. I could just gush over this all day. Right, we're almost there. We're coming up to the end. If you made it this far, you're the 1%. Well done. This is a side support where you can mount your gear shifter and your handbrake or anything else you might like. Here we've got a 320mm single slot aluminium profile of which we're going to mount a corner bracket and also the sandwich plate small using an M8 T-nut again with an M8 countersunk 20mm bolt. Easy peasy. Again, nothing much to see here. This is pretty straightforward. Just attach the small sandwich plate with the M8 T-nut as dictated in the manual and then also attach the corner bracket. I'd always advocate using a soft mallet in order to bash the little protective covers in because um, they can be quite tough and sticky. Page 23, you're then going to have a 550mm side of aluminium profile for which you will attach a singular T-nut at one end to receive the smaller aluminium profile with the corner bracket and then two other corner brackets at the other end to attach to the strut that supports the wheelbase. Here I am just connecting the two bits together. You'll notice that there are two corner brackets at the other end of the longer bit of the aluminium profile and then the other corner bracket is securing the smaller strut and here we have the completed article. It should look like this ready to be placed onto the P1X. Here we are at the P1X securing the sandwich plate to the end closest to the seat. Now you want this on the second row down. Now you can adjust this to whatever height you want really, so if you want a little bit higher, a little bit lower, you can do that. You just need to have a little bit of a play around with it. Put the put the gear stick on, have a bit of a feel, sit on the seat and kind of get it to the right position for you. It's a great thing about this um, aluminium profile stuff, you can tailor it to whatever specification that you want, within reason. And that really brings us to the end of this P1X build guide. Now, I do have a lot more stuff to discuss on all the accessories I've fitted. There's a whole other bit of this journey we haven't seen yet. So if you want to see stuff on how to mount base shakers to that sparker seat you saw, all the accessories and mounting, we fit some HOTAS stuff in as well, which is pretty cool. And also, we also managed to make a door for this. So if you want to see all those videos, if you're interested, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you all very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching. And bye for now. Yeah.